as a scholar and uh, professor of black studies, you've described an ancient Africa that is very rich in its heritage and its civilization, its use of science, agriculture. Describe ancient Africa to us, the kind of Africa that you've been studying and unearthing. We have images, and these images dominate us. These images dominate us, and, and the image of Africa has been totally destroyed by recent discoveries. discoveries. It's just that most people do not know of those discoveries. And the discoveries are made by Euro-American scientists mainly. Peter Schmidt and Donald Avery, for example, discovered Africans were smelting steel 1,500 to 2,000 years ago. I'm going to use the conservative estimate, mm -hmm. 1,500. They were smelting steel at a time when nobody in the world was smelting steel. And using a one-stage process, apparently, the, too. Well, what was so unusual about it is that they were preheating the air. And they had, um, they had a, a system whereby the, because of preheating the air and because of the, the, the other things they introduced, they were able to achieve temperatures of 3,275 degrees Fahrenheit in the blast zone. That was never achieved until centuries later. Mm -hmm. Iron actually melts at 2,642 degrees Fahrenheit. So that when they achieved this 3,275 degrees Fahrenheit, carbon from the swamp grass which they introduced would invade the iron, producing carbon crystals. Therefore, they produced steel. This is by a very, uh, this was about, they achieved temperatures about 200 to 400 degrees higher than anything achieved in Europe or elsewhere. And this is long in advance of the production of steel. And the East Indians from India would come into the port of Dar es Salaam. They would pick up this steel, which they called Wu steel, and they exported it to Europe. And Europe made Damascus swords. So the finest swords in the world were really made from African steel. But it's the history of iron and metallurgy in Africa is a fascinating journey that spans millennia and encompasses diverse cultures and civilizations. While specific dates can be challenging to pin down with precision, archaeological evidence provides a compelling narrative of the development of iron working on the African continent. The advent of ironworking in Africa is generally associated with the transition from the late Stone Age to the early Iron Age occurring around 3000 BCE in regions such as the Sahara and the ancient kingdom of Nok, which is present-day Nigeria, witnessed early experimentation with iron smelting and forging. The kingdom of Meroe, located in present-day Sudan, emerged as a center of iron production and trade. Skilled metal workers in Moreau utilized locally available iron ore to create tools, weapons, and ceremonial objects. The Bantu migrations, a significant demographic movement across sub-Saharan Africa, played a crucial role in the spread of iron working techniques. Bantu-speaking communities equipped with iron tools cultivated land more efficiently, contributing to the expansion of agriculture and the establishment of new settlements. The Aksumite Empire, Center in present-day Ethiopia was a hub of trade and cultural exchange. Aksumites engaged in iron working, producing tools and weaponry that contributed to their military and economic prowess. The great city of Zimbabwe, located in southeastern Africa, demonstrated advanced metallurgical skills. Skilled artisans in great Zimbabwe crafted iron tools and ornaments, and their achievements were reflected in the construction of monumental stone structures. The empire of Ghana, Mali, and Songhai in West Africa were centers of wealth and learning. The trans-Saharan trade routes facilitated the exchange of goods, including iron products, exchanging the metallurgical knowledge of the region. Coastal cities along the Swahili coast, such as Kilwa and Sofala, engaged in maritime trade and cultural exchange. Ironworking played a role in the production of tools and artifacts for both local use and export. European colonial powers introduced new technologies but often disrupted traditional ironworking practices. The extraction of mineral resources during the colonial period had a lasting impact on the indigenous metallurgical traditions. The development of iron and metallurgy in Africa is a testament to the ingenuity of its diverse cultures. This video showcases the continent's rich history where the alchemy of fire and earth shaped not only the tools, but the destiny of civilizations across time.